Hey guys, this is Wayne. Today I'm going to show you guys how to beat the Alexander campaign on the hardest difficulty and in the game with a score of at least 200 or more so that you can unlock the demonstrably greatest achievement. So if you're looking to unlock this achievement, I'm going to assume that you already played the campaign and already understand the basic mechanics of the game. Instead, we're just going to go over the important things such as your army makeup, which path they take, settlers, cities, and then we'll go into my gameplay a little bit so I can explain some things. Jumping right in, we have a total of three armies. The first one is Alexander's army with a total of six Hatoiroys and two Immortals. Do know that two of the Hatoiroys are purchased from Pura. The second army consists of one Hatoiroy, three Hypaspis, two Archers, and two Hoplites from Athens and a Siege Tower. And the last army consists of three Hatoiroy, one Hypaspis, one Archer, and one Siege Tower. One thing with the number two army is that I do have two great generals with it. One with the plus 10 attack and then the other one with the plus two movement. Okay, so here's a map that explains the route that each army takes. The white is your beginning army. Once you reach Arbella, Alexander separates from the rest of the army with his Hytoroi and heads towards Susa. As you can see here is yellow. And then the main army just heads up north all the way up to Murakanda. And the green here is your third army. And the first city that's going to take out is going to be Halicarnassus. And then from there on out, it's going to head towards Egypt. Now onto the cities and settlers. The first city we have here is going to be Pella, and the first thing I recommend you building out of it is going to be a Hypaspis. The reason is so that it won't fall behind. And this is going to be the third Hypaspis that's going to be with your main army that heads up towards Murakanda. Now the reason I chose Hypaspis over Hattoroi is because the route to Murakanda has many spearmen in the way. After this first Hypaspis, then I recommend producing Hattoroi's. So the second city we got here is going to be the first city that your settler settles. Now I recommend settling this city in about the same tile that I have settled here. As I found it, it's most efficient for food and production for the city. And also settling on that tile will allow you to construct an encampment in this tile down here. So the first thing I recommend you do with this city is uh, to build an encampment. And then after that, Hattoroi's. The third city we have here is going to be Athens. I recommend you repairing the encampment. And then after that, focus on production and build an archer. The reason why I recommend building an archer here is because sometimes there's two galleys that come from Helicarnassus and if it reaches Athens before it's fully healed it will take out Athens. After the archer I'll recommend building Hetoiroys. And then we have Sparta. Once you take over Sparta I'll recommend focusing on production and building a siege tower. Okay so now with Pella, Athens and the first city that you settled between those three you're gonna build just enough units for your three armies which I believe is about the total of six Hattoiroys. Now, if you do it right, you should finish all six Hattoiroys by the same turn or around the same turn as your Siege Tower. Once you're done producing Hattoiroys, then I'll recommend producing Settlers. But now here's the thing with Pella. After the first Settler and Pella, I like to switch out into Encampment Training. The reason why I do this is because for every Settler that you complete, the production cost for a new Settler increases. And there will be other cities that once you take over, you're going to want to try to construct Settlers out of. And those cities won't have as much production as Pella. So if you build too many Settlers out of Pella, then the Settlers in the other cities won't finish in time. And the reason why this works is because it's kind of a spread the load type of deal. By spreading the load, you'll be able to construct more settlers and have them finish all around the same turn. Also, at the same time, being able to keep your population high. Now, I don't remember the exact pattern, but I believe I was able to construct two settlers out of Pella, one out of Athens, one out of the first city that you settle, one out of Tarsus, one out of Arbella, and one out of Parsa, which makes seven settlers, and you purchase four more settlers to make a total of 11 settlers. For all the other cities, I recommend focusing on production, building encampment, and then focusing on encampment training. If you're unable to complete an encampment training by about thir turn 34, I recommend focusing on gold. And one last thing about settlers. Any cities settled on turn 37 does not count, so that means that you need to settle all your cities on turn 36, which means that you should try to buy all your settlers on turn 34. But depending on how the game goes, you may not be able to purchase all your settlers on turn 34 because you don't have enough gold, which means that you're going to have to purchase a settler on turn 35. But since it takes about two turns to settle a settler, as you can see here, three turns if you want to include the turn that you purchase your settler, it means you won't be able to settle your settler on turn 36, but there is a way around it. So what you're going to want to do is find a city that's kind of out on the edge like this with no enemies around. And then on turn 34, you're going to want to transfer one of your free great generals to that city. On turn 35, you're going to want to move him out of the city and then also purchase your settler. That way on turn 36, it can gain the plus one movement or plus two movement. So that way it can settle on turn 36.
Alright, last but not least, we're going to get to my gameplay just so I can explain a few things. So on turn one, you're going to want to take over this encampment. On turn two, you want to want to take out Athens. By turn four, you're going to want to take out Sparta. Okay, so now I'll just like mention that you should attack every turn that you can with any unit that you can. And uh, you shouldn't spend your promotions right away. Um, you have to be strategic about them and only spend them when you have absolutely nothing to do with your unit other than to spend that promotion. The more you play this game, you'll get a feel for when you should spend the promotion or when you shouldn't. And when you should attack or when you shouldn't. So now after Sparta, you just continue straight forward east. Okay, now this position here between the Mediterranean Sea and these mountains is a good spot to get walled up at. If you do get walled up at, I recommend just reloading our earlier saved game. Keep pushing forward until you've taken Arbella. And here you'll notice that I separate Alexander from the main army with a couple of his Hattorais. The reason why I did this is because the faster you get to a city like Susa, the less likely you'll encounter troops and the easier you'll be able to take down the city. As you notice here, Babylon starts getting surrounded by Persian troops, which makes it a little bit harder to take out. So while this main army is trying to take out Babylon, we can continue to press forward with Alexander's troops. Now it's really important that you try to take out Babylon by about turn 16, Halicarnassus by about turn 18, and Parsa by about turn 22. These are healing cities that you are going to be taking back to back, but it's okay because you really don't need to heal any of your units until once you start taking out Patala and heading up towards Murakanda or reaching Murakanda. So once you take out Ispahan, I recommend buying a siege tower. That way you can have a straight shot to parse up with it. Alright, so with Alexander's army, once you reach Pera and you've taken it out, um, I recommend buying the Toyroids as soon as you can. And then those Hattorais are going to be used to move towards Batala, towards the bottom of the map, as Alexander's army is going to hit the top, which is closer to the city. By doing this, it'll thin out the Varus a little bit away from the city, so that way you can attack it. And then, of course, you want to save Memphis for this attack. Now, I highly recommend healing up all your Hattorais that are with Alexander before you enter Batala. And so after you've taken Patala, just keep pressing forward and then finish off the game. And with that sums up this video. If you guys did find it useful and helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. And in the description below, I will leave a link to my actual gameplay just for those who are interested in seeing how I did it. It will be at a faster speed though. And once again, thanks you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Though its face may change throughout the ages, history is written from the hand of the victor. By your actions this day, you ensure our people a glorious tomorrow.